then you can do the statistics and all these things that sometimes don't want to be sexist, but I think sometimes men are better at these things than, than these women. So I thought I would just discuss with you a bit about my life and about why I think that independence is the right route to take. Um, my father grew up in the east end of Glasgow. He left school at 14 years old. Um, had worked every day of his life until he was struck down with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, my mother was grew up in Lanarkshire. She was badly burned when she was nine, so she left school at nine years old. My two parents, their proudest moments were when my sister and I went to university, particularly my sister, who studied Russian and business studies. And my parents were just so proud. But that pride was tinged with sadness when my sister had to move down south in order to get the kind of opportunities that she needed to work in the things that she dreamed of. And later, when I graduated, I too had to go down south to get the kind of opportunities that we need. I spent a lot of time crying on my father's um, shoulder, and he spoke to his best friend and managed to get my husband a job in Scotland, so I managed to get back again. My sister, unfortunately, still lives down south, and would still love to be up here, but her life is now down there with her husband and her two children. She has two lovely, very clever kids, just like I do. And um, her son is now going off to university this, this September. My sister's worried sick how she's going to manage to pay £9,000 a year on university fees for her son. And today I was at the school prize giving for my son. And he got the prize in modern studies and the prize in chemistry as well, and I am so proud of him too. My younger son, as well, is a real clever little cookie. He's going up to secondary school soon. Both of my kids will probably have the intelligence to go to university. Why would I want to pay £54,000 to send my kids through uni? Why would I do that? I want to live in a country where we value education, where we value our young people, where the ability to learn is what counts and not the ability to pay. So young kids who have these abilities, they when you educate a young person, you don't just give things to that young person, you don't just benefit them, you benefit the whole of our society. And education, we, Scotland has a proud history of education, and that's something that we should be looking at. But often when I'm talking about um, independence, people say, oh, you know, Scotland would end up being a parochial little country on the edge of Europe looking inward. Sometimes I wonder if in the UK we actually look outward enough. Because if you look at university tuition fees throughout Europe, I think you'll find the average tuition fee in Europe is £3,500. If you go to the Netherlands to study, you'll pay about £2,000 a year for your tuition fees. If you go to Denmark, it will be free. The UK is an outlier on tuition fees. But they tell us how brilliant our economy is, a strong economy that is good for us to be part of, but we can afford child weapons and we can't afford to educate our young people. That's not the kind of society that I want my children to grow up in. If they do go to university, and I hope they do, then once they come out, they may wish to go away. They may wish to go to America, they may wish to go down south, but they shouldn't have to. Scotland's not a poor country. Scotland should be able to provide opportunities for our young people to be able to stay here, to live here, to build their lives here, and to bring the families up here. And while that's good for them, it's good for all of our society. I, I, I think grandparents are just an amazing thing in children's lives. Grandparents, <laughs> they, they have such patience with kids. And they give such a lot to children. And I don't mean that grandparents should be constantly looking after kids, but I really think it is good for both the kids and for the grandparents for there to be a relationship there and not just to be the granny that comes down to see you at Christmas or maybe uh, in the summer holidays, like my mother unfortunately has to do with my, children, my sister's children. So while my kids might decide they want to leave, I don't want them to have to leave. I want them to have the opportunity to stay in this country. Because another of the things that we are told about this country is that we can't possibly have independence 
because we have an aging population. And our aging population is aging faster than any of the other nations of the United Kingdom. They tell me that. They don't tell me why. I wonder, is it because a fair percentage of our talented young people have to go elsewhere? But while they're telling me that, they don't tell me what they're going to do about it. They don't tell me how they're going to fix it. So I think there has to be a better way for us in this country. And also, while I want to live in this country that values education, that values our young people, that provides opportunity for our young people, I would also want to live in a caring society. I said to you earlier that my father had worked every day of his life until he got rheumatoid arthritis. My father got rheumatoid arthritis around right about the time that Margaret Thatcher was in power. And at that point, we had medical checkups that were very similar to what we're getting now with that office. I remember after one particular checkup that my father had in order to get his dole money, he ended up in hospital for two days. We hadn't seen that, things had been better for people who were sick, but when you look at the direction that we're going in the UK now, and the way we are demonising the poor people in this country, the way we are demonising the sick in this country, that's not the kind of society that I want my kids to grow up in. It's not the society I want to grow up in. I think we have to be a And I also want a democratic society. I want the Scotland to get the government it votes for. I mean, nothing against the Tories, but we didn't vote for them. We didn't vote to have the bedroom tax. We didn't vote to have these cuts in welfare. And I would like to see a democratic country where we get the government that we vote for. I also want to see a country that's free of nuclear weapons. I don't know an awful lot about the things I have to say. But when I look at the world today and I look at the things that maybe frighten me a wee bit, I'm kind of looking at germ warfare, I'm looking at chemical warfare, I'm looking at cyber attacks, and I'm wondering what good a nuclear sub is going to do against that. Should we maybe be dragging ourselves up into present day and not posturing with a nuclear sub? And that's what it is, it's posturing on the world stage. And we can't afford it. I live in Eastern Berkshire. There's a quite a well-to-do area in Eastern Berkshire called Mogai. Joe Swinson is our MP. A month ago we opened a food bank in Mogai. But we can afford Trident? I don't think we can. I really don't think we can. So, if we get independence, um, I'm not saying that everything is going to be hunky-dory. I'm not saying that everything is going to be wonderful. Jim was saying we need clarity, we need facts, we need to know what we're going into. We're not going to get it. Nobody's going to be able to tell us for certain what's going to happen if we get independence. Just like nobody's going to be able to tell us for certain what will happen if we don't. So I'm looking at probabilities. I'm looking at the society that I want to see, the society that I would like my children to grow up in. And I'm looking at where the best chance is of getting something approaching that society. And I look at the UK, I look at UKIP, I look at bankers, I look at what we are doing to the sick and the poor people in, in the UK, and I don't see it happening any, any time soon. I think the chances of getting something approaching the kind of decent society that I want are best with independence, and that's why I'll be voting yes.